so it can be hard to keep track of what we're doing in each video. So for this video, I've written us an agenda. Here's our agenda. Trace this code. Um, oh, I put it. I also added a typo to my code. Let's delete that. Uh, so what I want to do is run through this code. We'll use a diagram. It won't be a very complicated diagram. I want to see what happens at each step. And then uh, eventually, I would like to print out by hand the output that the code generates. So let's see what happens. OK, so I'm going to start on line 10. And I get to line 11. And I'm going to begin drawing a diagram. Now, starting here, I think we should actually begin drawing our diagrams um, using a new notation where we put the whole diagram in a box. And the box is going to be called main. And from now on, we're going to try and do that. And we'll see why next week. So it, as you might have noticed, in this program, we are inside these curly brackets that are apparently have something to do with the name main. And so when we trace, we're going to uh, put everything we do inside a box called main. OK, so I get to line 11, and I create an int called n. And the box is currently, I haven't assigned a value to it yet. And we'll think about that. That's a thing we'll talk about on Thursday. Uh, but there are reasons why we, we should leave that box empty and not assume that it contains anything in particular until we get to some point that assigns a value. Line 13, I assign the value 3. OK, line 15, I get to the beginning of this while loop. So I ask the question, is n less than or equal to 5? And remember that uh, in these yes or no questions, I could actually ask something more complicated, like is n times 2 less than or equal to 5? And that's because this is actually an expression. And I have to evaluate it just like anything else. It has a value and a type. But in this case, the value of, I would you know, sub it in, the value of n is 3. Is 3 less than or equal to 5? The answer is yes. If the answer is yes, we go through the entire loop body and come back up. OK, so the first thing we do on line 16 is print out 3 squared is, and then we print out 3 times 3, which is 9. And then n equals n plus 1. Now Maybe it's obvious what this does, but just in case, let's evaluate this like any other assignment statement. So what's n plus 1? Well, n is the value 3. That's 3, OK. 3 plus 1 is 4. OK, so this entire right-hand side comes out to 4. OK, where do I put the 4? Oh, right, I put it into n. OK, so I erase the current value of n, and I put in the value 4. And then we'll just erase that. OK, so now I get to the closing curly bracket of my loop. And that means I have to walk all the way back up and ask the question again. Is n less than or equal to 5? And the answer is, again, yes. So I go down, and I print out 4 squared is 16. And then again, I increment the value of n. Now, I could draw this out. Maybe you get the idea by now. But it's fine to draw it out. It's better to be accurate than to try and do things in your, whoops, OK, yeah, maybe I'm proving my own point there. OK, so uh, I add 1 to 4, and I get 5. And then I, I get to the end of the loop, and I scroll back up, and I ask the question again, is n less than or equal to 5? And the answer is still yes. So I go down to line 16, and I print out 5 squared is 25. It's a weird looking 5. And then I say n equals n plus 1. And so of course, I set the value of n from 5. It goes up to 6. And then I scroll back up. And I must always do this. I, I should not be assuming, oh yeah, the loop has to end now. Under every circumstance, even if it seems obvious, you always go back up and ask that question again. Is 6 less than or equal to 5? And the answer is no. When the answer is no, then you skip down to the first line, the first statement below that loop. And so I get to line 19, which is empty. I get to line 20, and I print out the word done. So we'll see what happens if I actually run that. And we can see it, it prints out exactly what I expected. So I did trace through the code successfully. Now, in the next video, what I want to show off is what happens if one of those ingredients for the loop isn't there or is incorrect. We now know how to trace loops. Uh, and so what happens if I have a mistake? Maybe I can use tracing to solve the problem.